good day to all. It's Dave, CTO of DVS. Uh, welcome to another YouTube broadcast on some really exciting things that I'm about to show you. Today, I'm going to give you a very quick overview of a couple of things. One is the new internal panel view from Hike Vision. One, another one is the GUI 4 interface. And then lastly, how to set up a VCA, like a line cross or intrusion detection. So a couple of little things in a very nice and quick, easy manner. So it should be a short video today. Again, thank you for all your support that you've given us and all the questions and feedback we get from all the customers worldwide. Um, so all I can do is thank you. Keep watching, keep subscribing, and hopefully we'll um, all learn and grow together. So the first thing I want to show you is if you can look at the screen, you'll see on here, um, it's one of the new Hike Vision internal panel views. So each one is, a, so we've got three fixed lens cameras to create an overall 360 image, and then a PTZ that can be maneuvered into position to catch any area of interest that you want with a four times optical zoom, which is a 2.8 to 12 mil. It's not continual rotation or continual use rated, but it is very good at covering, uh, say if you put it on a junction of um, in a retail space where you've got pod, pod ends, um, where you want to uh, cover up a couple of aisles and then a PTZ to zoom into an area of interest. Uh, it works very well in that. It's one camera, one IP address, one power source, four channels off it. So like I said, they are 1080p fixed lens, built in IR, and it's also got the 3D positioning. So if I show you the 3D positioning, if any of you have seen the 3D positioning before, so basically what we can do is by magic of whoop, the mouse, the actual correct mouse, I'm gonna go to 3D positioning, turn on 3D positioning. Now I can draw a box around the image like this, now the PTZ will zoom and correspond to that and zoom in and give us the best view we can possibly get. And it'll auto focus. So you can see there, it's a really neat device aimed at retail. Only just come out the last couple of months, but it is becoming a nice little selling device. Now if I take my laptop and point it up, you can see the device up there. If I take my finger and point it up there, you can see it. It's a nice little unit, like I said, very, very powerful for what it does. Okay, moving on. So this is the GUI 4. So as you can see, a very, very um, new designed, put myself back in the picture, very new designed GUI. Uh, it's meant to engage the end user more, so it flows nicely. Uh, it's very good if you're used to using Windows tablets, uh, you know, uh, modern apps. It's kind of app-led, that style, like a VMS. So you've got your live view interface with the... Uh, camera selection down the left hand side. You've got your target detection box. So this is an i-series recorder, a 9632 i-series recorder. It's got a couple of AMPR cameras on there. So what you'll find is when a car passes through one of our AMPR cameras, on the left hand side now you've got the live view interface where it'll capture that vehicle, uh, show you the number plate and then you'll be able to click and see the recorded footage. I'm just checking outside for my other monitor. It's raining heavily here in Cardiff and uh, that's quite normal. Uh, hopefully a car will pass sh through shortly and we'll be able to show you that working at least come back to it and uh, then you've got your so you've got your channel selection target action you've got your playback so for instance you can choose your time and date select your camera then you've got your timeline export functionality uh, custom and smart I can go through that as a separate topic but it is much improved more easy easier easier for the end user to get that uh, footage they require then you've got your file management, so you've got your vehicle files for AMPR, you've got your human files for, uh, if you're using the correct cameras for human presence. You've got your smart analysis, counting and heat map. So we've got a people counting camera on here. So if I go to people counting, I choose a weekly report. Now we've had quite a few people in and out. There we go. So over the last month, we've had a few people in that with the demo room. And the same with heat map. You go to the heat map section. One of the fisheye cameras, the Nest E card in it. So I've got the 12 megapixel fisheye there. Do a weekly report. And select counting. So it generates a heat map based on the activity in this room over the last week or the date range you, date, date range you selected. So nice and easy. Then we've got our camera menu. Nice new function in here. It takes a snapshot every so often and updates that front end image. So if I have any cameras missing and one goes offline and I haven't labeled any of my cameras, nice and easy to see where that camera is because you can see the last image of when it went offline. So it makes your job a little bit easier, I guess. 
or you can put it back into list view if you prefer that's the older style so we support both then you've got your storage see that hasn't really changed and you've got your system and maintenance tab so there's a lot more in here once you get used to it, it i actually really like this gui um by default now a lot of the recorders for the i series are coming out with the gui 4 on there you can backdate it if you want currently the one thing i wanted to go through is i'm gonna have to go and get my able assistant jake we're gonna show you how easy it is to set up a uh, line crossing or intrusion and then you can do it through the front end and if you want to use in the web browser for the camera or use an ims 4200 you can set minimum and maximum object size so i'm just going to go off get jake be nice to him and i'll be back very very shortly so welcome back i've got my uh, friendly assistant jake to come and help me say hello jake hello that's jake so jake without jake uh, and the marketing department we wouldn't be where we are today they're the brains and the beauty uh, as we all know so thank you to jake keep everything coming so what we're going to show you now is how to set up uh, an intrusion or line cross on the camera it's raining outside here in Wales, which is very normal. So rather than send uh, Jake out in the rain, bless him and ruin that lovely hair, <laughs> we're, we're not going to do that to him. We're going to for that. So we'll just quickly go into the setup of the event. We'll go into event and then smart event. We pick our camera, so it's the three megapixel bullet. We're going to select line cross. We've drawn a line, we've enabled it. So I'll just apply that. You can set the direction of travel, so it's A and B, you can see there, or you can choose it A to B, B to A. And you've got your arming schedule, and you've got your linkage action. We're going to have full screen monitor, monitoring audible alarm, notify surveillance sensor, software, or the app on your phone, and then send email. So we're going to put it back to live view. Jake's now going to take a nice walk up to the video wall up there. So off you go, Jake. It's a nice robotic walk you've got going on there. So there we go, that's him triggering it. He's going to stop and turn around. And the event is going to go back to a split screen. Now come back across. And there we go. So he's triggered it both ways. So we can adjust the sensitivity or the line um, to adjust that. And it's very similar with intrusion. So if we go back, take the mouse, and we go into the event, go to smart event, choose our camera, and we go to line cross. Let's turn line cross off. We've sort of done line cross. Jake's learning, it's like yeah, yeah, sorry, educational, every day's yeah, a school day, in trance, so we can do the same with enable intrusion detection, we can draw our area which is a box, there's a bit more configurable in there, so we'll just put a big box around there, that's protecting our valuable area, now you've got your time threshold, time threshold is how long that object has to be in there before it, it triggers the alarm, so let's put two seconds, you've got sensitivity which is default 50, and the percentage we don't need, so if we apply that, schedule and linkage action, we'll do the same for the linkage action. Click apply. Go back to live view. So Jake, now if you take a walk up, a nice walk and just loiter in this area a bit. Come in. Loiter in. So we're going to see him just check in. Loiter, come back a bit. You're not in the detection area now, Jake. You're out of the detection area. Yeah. No, keep going. <laughs> yeah. That's it, you're done. Right. So you've stayed in there for two seconds or more, that's now triggered it, you can come back. Worst assistant. So ever. that's that's the worst assistant ever. I don't <laughs> know you're not, you're like the magician's assistant. We wouldn't be able to do a magic show without the assistant, would we? Sorry about that. Kids. Um <laughs> that, go to school, get your certificates and all your <laughs> educational things and you wouldn't be here like me and him now talking to a, a camera built into a PC. So, we've shown you line cross, we've shown you intrusion, we can do it a step further, so on all the latest firmware for the two line, five line uh, cameras and the new seven, eights and the PTZ, you can do minimum and maximum object size filtration. So rather than having cats and dogs trigger your line cross or your intrusion area, I'm gonna web browse into the camera itself or we can use IMS 4200. I'm gonna show you IMS 4200 because it's easier, where we can now set up a minimum and maximum object size to further enhance the stability of the VCA product. So give us a couple of minutes, we'll set up and we'll come back and we'll just show you that briefly. See you in a minute. Welcome back, back with Jake. We're gonna show you how to set up the minimum and maximum object size filtration. So that's gonna help you further reduce any false alarms you may see from the VCA analytic intrusion or line cross. It enables you to make it a little bit more stable. Um, so it does work internally. We're on a very small field of view. It works uh, very well if it's external. So what we're going to show you is how to set the minimum and maximum object size. So for instance, 
when I get my mouse back over here, for instance, I've drawn my detection area, so I want to know if anyone goes near my video wall, so valuable video wall, and we want to know if Jake is trying to steal it to take it home to his council flat. So, we're going to draw the minimum maximum object size. So you can see here, the VCA is picking him up with the green box around there. So my maximum object size, we're only seeing him to the waist down, so if he goes and stands a little further away, stands a bit there, you'll see, obviously, his size increases. So I'm going to draw a, an analytic box, which is bigger than himself, because the analytic box it uses, you can see there, it's not as wide as it's put in. So if we draw an area, maximum size, so if we make it a bit, give him plenty of room for growth, because he's a bit expanding rapidly. We're going to set a threshold of two seconds, so that our seconds is how long the object has to be in the area and meet those analytic rules before it's triggered. And then, so if he goes up to the video wall, you'll see is he, as he moves further away from the field of view, his size becomes smaller. So I can use that as a reference as the smallest that we need to make him. So little Jake is about there. So as long as he's above minimum, so if I put this little minimum, that's minimum, but he's, he's got to be bigger than the minimum, minimum to trigger it, so we'll just make it a little bit smaller again. There, move it smaller, move it back in, that's the easiest way, so that's about right. We'll save that. Now if Jake comes out with a field of view, he comes back to me. So we set our minimum and, mag minimum and maximum as a mouthful, object size. So he comes back to me out with a field of view. We'll put it back into the live view and hopefully when he goes into that area, he'll meet and match those rules and the alarm will be triggered. And we can all move on to the next housing video. So wait briefly for this to load. It takes a little bit of time because we're pulling it directly from the web browser through my laptop to capture. We go into that area now, Jake. Stands about there for a couple of seconds, turns around, catwalk. There you go, he's met that minimum and maximum object size. He's triggered it. If you come back out, it'll clear down. And that's how you use the minimum and maximum object size to your advantage. Currently, if you're on an older GUI, you can set it through IMS 4200 through the remote configuration. The best place is the web browser directly in the camera. We're looking to have that put into the GUI 4 interface as well as the web interface for the IP camera via the NVR. Have a great weekend, uh, even though you may be on a Monday watching this. See you soon. Don't forget, subscribe to our channel. Keep notified whenever we put new content on there. Like and share away. See you soon.